The wet tropics of far north Queensland are home to more species of plants and animals than anywhere else on the Australian continent. The region has been internationally recognized for its unique and ancient biodiversity. Right next door are the Atherton Tablelands and the Mobby Rainforest, a critically endangered habitat type found nowhere else on Earth. This habitat is characterized by its structural complexity and it used to cover the whole region. But since the 19th century, this unique rainforest has been extensively cleared for pastoral lands and monoculture farming. Due to the habitat destruction from monoculture farming around the world, this conventional farming method has become one of the largest threats to global biodiversity. In recent years, however, regenerative farming have emerged. So this type of farming aims to maybe the functions of the ecosystem. This method of farming prioritizes natural processes and focuses on rehabilitating and enhancing the soil health. This is done through a variety of practices like increasing crop diversification, minimizing soil disturbance, composting, and having no bare ground. By implementing these practices, regenerative farms are able to restore ecological balance and foster biodiversity. Through Centropics, a very holistic way of management so that we look at the farm as a whole ecosystem. Um, any given space where I'm growing could have up to 60 species of plants in it. Um, that I've either put there or that has nominated itself to go there. Um, not to imagine, you know, the diversity of animal life. And as each species comes in, we notice that one will just balance another one out. And so it's been a big change for, as a mindset, because using commercial agriculture, you go, oh gosh, I've got to get, better get up and go out and spray. And you have to sit back and go, well, what other species is going to do this function? Our goal with this research is to better understand how varying agricultural methods affect biodiversity and whether these methods can maintain a similar level of biodiversity to native ecosystems while sustainably fulfilling human needs. What's really interesting about this study is we're comparing a monoculture and the traditional style of farming um, with syntropic farming, which aims to kind of um, mimic um, a natural ecosystem like a rainforest and comparing that to what's kind of like the target state of a primary rainforest um, and using different elements of biodiversity to act as indicators and to tell us um, about the quality of the habitat and how similar they are in terms of a rainforest. There's been very little work making proper comparisons between uh, this kind of agricultural land use. It might seem like uh, a logical hypothesis that we might expect a lower species diversity of invertebrates and animals in a monoculture setting. For this comparative study, we surveyed four groups known for their ability to reflect an ecosystem's health. Our three sites were chosen based on their close proximity to each other, tree-dominated landscapes, and being primarily basaltic soil. Across all three sites, we surveyed moths and leaf litter invertebrates, and at two sites, the regenerative farm and reference forest, we surveyed birds and dung beetles. First, we collected five leaf litter samples from each site and separated the invertebrates using Burley's funnels. With a dissection microscope, we identified and counted over 100 different species. We then plotted the species composition with each point representing a sample of leaf litter. As you can see, the regenerative farm and reference forest had similar species composition, whereas the monoculture farm was significantly different. This indicates how regenerative farms can serve as ions of refugia for invertebrate species similar to that of the reference forest. Second, we set up light sheets at our three sites to survey the moth species present. In total, we observed 94 species with the highest number of species at the reference forest. The two farms had minimal overlap with less total species than the reference forest. Third, we surveyed for dung beetles at both the regenerative farm and reference forest. We set up three pitfall traps along six different rows for a total of 18 pitfall traps at each site. We separated the specimens and by the end had over 1,150 dung beetles identified and sorted. As seen in this bar graph, the number of species found at each site was similar, but the identity and functional roles of the species were significantly different. This demonstrates that while the regenerative farm can't replace the rainforest diversity, it can support key native dung beetle species. Fourth, and lastly, we surveyed birds at these same two sites. We observed a total of 70 species and found a roughly equal number of species at both sites with a 25% overlap. Notably, seven species of rainforest-dependent birds were sighted at the regenerative farm 
indicating that the farm can support native rainforest species. Our study has found that there are similar biodiversity levels between the regenerative farm and the reference forest, but the exact species at each site differ. It is important to understand that while regenerative farming cannot replace the native habitat of the Atherton Tablelands, it can provide a crucial habitat for many native species. This method of farming enhances the region's biodiversity while still fulfilling the needs of the people living there. Within regenerative ag, as we grow healthy ecosystems and we actually go beyond just ourselves, we look at growing a healthy planet again where we can grow food. Within that health, we grow healthy humans.